Hello everyone, I'm really excited to have you at our launch studio. Today you're going to find out in less than one hour, we're going to be looking at the launch of our first commercial shared satellite mission, Platform One with SpaceX. My name is Viktor Danchev and I'm a CTO at Endurosat. I have with me one of our systems engineer, Victoria Marklieva, and today we're going to explore some sneak peeks of how the Platform One was created and we're going to find out a bit more about this mission as well as one of our most interesting customers, IBM. We're going to be flying a very interesting Earth exploration and demonstration mission on this satellite. Tonight you're going to have some exclusive content with interviews from our team, from our customers' teams, and you're going to have a live launch of the, of the mission in less than one hour, both from Cape Canaveral and our HQ. The Endurance mission, IBM's mission on our shared satellite service, is actually one of the first demonstrations of in-orbit edge computing to demonstrate amazing capability of satellite processing in space. What IBM is going to be performing is letting thousands of people around the globe write code and process data directly on satellites to help solve problems on Earth. How is this possible on a satellite which is carrying multiple other payloads is due to our shared satellite service. And Vicky is going to tell you a bit more about that. Yes, we can get you to space very fast. But did you know that our shared satellite missions are fully booked until Q1 2023? So if you want to fly with us and get your payload into orbit in just six months' time and operate it easily, check out our website and see the available launch slots. Space sector is complex. It's time and resource consuming. So we spent countless hours in design and engineering to solve two challenges. How fast can you get to space and how can you generate more data? Using our software-defined nanosats, we are proud to introduce you the shared satellite service, the easiest way to get your payload to orbit and to operate it via a simple cloud interface. We know that your next mission would impact positively thousands of people on the ground and bring enormous value and inspiration. And we want you to make it today, not tomorrow. No hidden fees, no complexities. Focus on your payload. We'll take care of the rest. Integration, space qualification, legal registrations. You have complete flexibility of operations and focus on what matters, your mission. It's all done in three simple steps. Select your preferred mission option, prepare your payload and start generating space data in just a few months' time. Our software-defined nanosats can carry multiple customer payloads on every flight at a fraction of the industry cost and time. At Endurosat, we believe that access to space should be a fundamental human right and we hope that your success story in space would come quicker and have bigger impact. Get your payload to orbit today. Our shared missions are available and we hope to see you on board. I'm glad to present to you Naim Altaf. He's the leader of IBM's Space Tech Innovation Group. They are focused on developing the next generation space technology, such as edge computing in orbit, developing autonomous framework for CubeSat swarms, uh, dealing with challenges such as uh, space debris and collision avoidance, as well as uh, processing uh, image data and uh, performing geospatial analysis based on it. Uh, Naim has been with IBM for more than 20 years. Check out our exclusive interview with Naim himself. So uh, our vision and goal for the mission was very clear from the day one, and that was uh, how we can democratize uh, access to space. Uh, in, in very simple words, uh, to, to explain that what it means is that how we can make space accessible to everyone, how we can streamline this process of getting these uh, school-aged kids uh, access to the wonders of space. So people from several countries came together to bring this whole uh, project to fruition. Uh, it's a completely uh, global team effort, and we as IBMers, we believe in innovation that matters. The key to success for any project is you know, defining the clear goals and scope well in advance. So uh, we had a great collaboration and working relationship with the Indurosat team. Projects like these, which span you know, or stretch over several time zones and across the continents are always, always challenging. But I believe with our clear and crisp communication on both sides, we were able to successfully complete the project on time just before the launch. And it has been a very productive and pleasant experience for us IBMers. And 
I really hope that it was the same for our entire team. Great question. So this is the core of our uh, our mission. So besides, of course, the the primary objective to uh, provide the connectivity to the you know to the students all over the globe to give them access to space. One of some of the few you know core technologies which we want to uh, showcase in this uh, in this uh, mission is the uh, using the Podman, which is the container runtime, and the micro shift, which is for managing these containerized workloads. So today, when you look at the uh, you know the solutions being run on, on, the, on the planet, majority of the latest codes are built on the containerized uh, you know platforms on that on those standards. So we are focusing on enabling the execution of code by introducing we call it containers in space. So users, as they will be building applications uh, today on the ground, will be able to seamlessly uh, push their containerized code to compute in space as the underlying platforms are similar. This will go a long way in enabling satellite as a service model for running multi-tenant applications. We are thrilled about this launch. I mean, we have been working on this uh, endurance uh, project for, like I said, for nearly two years now. It's a dream come true. Platform One will be flying in a sun-synchronous orbit with an altitude between 500 and 600 kilometers. This is the ideal orbit for Earth observation and image analysis. And do you know what's in the satellite? The satellite has a power system, data handling, communications, and ADCS. This is our standard platform, which is already flying with multiple customers. And on top of that, sit all of the payloads of our customers for Platform One. What's special about Platform One is that it's an EnduroSat uh, 6U software-defined uh, platform, and it gives the opportunities for more than one payload to be hosted and to, to operate, uh, which is an amazing uh, thing. And uh, what's really cool about it is that we can actually do onboard processing now in space, onboard processing, meaning like we can actually take photos in space and process them um, as, as we fly, um, as we uh, orbit Earth. The shared satellite service is, is, very, is a very special uh, service provided by Endurosat because it gives uh, an opportunity for different uh, players in not only in the space in the space sector but also private companies also individuals I, I would say which are backed up by uh, financing from 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 different sites they, they can very easily and at the fraction of the cost of uh, previous uh, satellite missions they can afford to put their payloads in orbit and have data streamed to, to their computers on their desks so the mission uh, is very interesting because it combines more than one customer payload and we had to develop specific uh, algorithms from the operational mode side and scheduling side so that we can activate and operate these payloads while we are not in contact with the satellite. One of the biggest challenges that we had on platform one is that all of our clients were coming with different demands and actually some of them were quite heavy uh, but we managed to integrate them uh, everything that had to be done within uh, such a short period of time because we want our customers to be able to fly fastly that means we work in sometimes three four five times um, smaller time frames compared to uh, the conventional satellite providers and uh, this is very challenging I'm proud that uh, I work in a really uh, fast-paced and uh, very experienced team. And uh, this is the reason why Platform One, from my point of view, is a very successful uh, satellite. Uh, we, with uh, all the expertise that we have, we managed to quickly overcome all the difficulties and challenges that we faced during the platform development. And I'm sure that uh, it will be a very successful mission. The most fascinating features of Platform One are um, actually the, the fact that uh, we can now uh, provide a platform that can host different kinds of payloads and we provide more and more infrastructural uh, elements that enable different customers to 
have their specific data on the ground. So our integration with the ground segment, with the satellite, and all the commanding and control becomes easier and uh, it, it gets really flexible and easy for customers to get their data. Well, the biggest benefit of the, the shared satellite service, in my opinion, is the simplicity. Uh, you don't need to be uh, an aerospace professional. Uh, you don't need to have an aerospace company. In order to be able to access space, you just need to develop your payload. If you're, uh, if you're in science and you have an idea of an amazing sensor, you can just develop it and pass it to us and we can fly it for you. Um, it's simple as that. I'm really excited about our shared satellite mission and I'm looking forward to the result and the innovation that our clients are going to make. We expect that we'll be deployed shortly after the launch and uh, our launch and early orbit operations. They include deployment of the antenna, uh, first contact with the satellite uh, shortly after, of course, the, the deployment of the antenna and start of the commissioning procedures that would include the different subsystems of the satellite. Today is not the day to ask me that question. Uh, okay, really... does. Why? Oh, um, just because I'm not from the engineering team. <laughs> no, wait. <laughs> wait. Absolutely the same. <laughs> Mind blowing. Chaga, guapa.
Hey, it's launch director and countdown net. Pad is clear. Ten, nine, eight. Launch auto sequence seven, has started. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Go for launch. Dragon, separation confirmed. Stage one is transonic. Landing lakes have deployed. And Falcon 9 has landed. You're looking at a live view of the Falcon 9 rocket set to lift off at 2.35 p.m. Eastern time from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral's Space Force Station in Florida. I'm Kate Tice, Quality Systems Engineering Manager, joining you from the opposite coast at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. Today, we're launching SpaceX's Transporter 5 mission. As the name suggests, it's our fifth dedicated SmallSat rideshare program launch and also our 22nd launch of 2022. On this flight are 59 spacecraft, including CubeSats, Microsats, and orbital transfer vehicles carrying the spacecraft to be deployed at a later time. There will be a total of 39 deployments, which will begin around the T plus 59 minute mark and last for approximately 15 minutes. We are expecting to lose ground station coverage about halfway through the deployment sequence. Therefore, only some of our deployments, fuel load complete. Only some of our deployments will be visible today. However, uh, when we're back in range of ground stations, we do expect to have telemetry and hear audio confirmation uh, over the nets. If you'd like to see a full list of today's deployments, head over to SpaceX.com. Now, we are just under six minutes until liftoff. Let's take a moment to learn about the Falcon 9 rocket on your screen. To give you a sense of the scale, the Falcon 9 rocket supporting today's launch stands just three meters short of the Taj Mahal in India. It was named after the Millennium Falcon in Star Wars and gets the number nine after the number of Merlin 1D engines or M1D engines at the base of the rocket. What you see on your screen are four key parts that make up the rocket, the first and second stages, the black inner stage in between, and then the payload fairing at the very top. The first stage is the bottom two thirds of the vehicle, and that's what we refer to as the booster. Those nine Merlin engines do the bulk of the work to get Falcon 9 off the ground and up into the thinner parts of the Earth's atmosphere. For today's mission, it'll be flying a southern trajectory along Florida's eastern coast, which may make this flight visible from the ground. At about two and a half minutes into Thanks flight, for strong back retread. About two and a half minutes into flight, the first stage will separate and make its way back to Earth and target a landing back on land at landing zone one or LZ1, which you see there on your screen. For those keeping track, today's mission marks the eighth flight for this particular booster, including the most recent transporter mission back in April. On top of the first stage is the black uh, carbon fiber inner stage. It connects the two stages and houses the pneumatic pushers that allow the first and second stage to separate during flight. Then on top of the inner stage is the second stage, which will take the 59 spacecraft to their eventual destination in orbit. After launch, be sure to check out the velocity gauge that you'll see on your screen. See how fast we're going when stage one separates and then how fast we're going when we shut down second stage. You'll notice that the second stage actually contributes more velocity than the first stage. Right now, the spacecraft are enclosed inside the large barrel structure. With the, uh, there we just heard the call out and you can see on your screen that the strong back is now retracting ever so slightly. Um, but, so the spacecraft are enclosed in the uh, barrel structure with the pointed nose that you see there. That's what we call the fairing. Its job is to protect the payload until the vehicle is, is outside the Earth's atmosphere, at which point the fairing separates to expose them to space. We are three minutes and 15 seconds away from liftoff. As of right now, the vehicle remains healthy and we are currently working no issues. Um, prop load is underway. Uh, we're just momentarily, we're going to hear the call out. Stage one, lock load complete. There it is. So first stage is now 
loaded with its liquid oxygen, or as we call it, LOX. Second stage is still undergoing its LOX load. Um, as for the range, they are green and remain ready to support. And the weather, as you can see on your screen, is gorgeous in Florida today. We only have a 10% chance of violation for those weather rules. Now, if for some reason we do not launch today, we do have another opportunity tomorrow at the same time. for two and a half minutes before liftoff. And at this point, uh, I'd like to note that there are actually some really cool payloads flying on this mission, including spacecraft designed to help monitor weather, environmental changes, and greenhouse gas emissions, improve communications and GPS mapping, and some that even demonstrate new in-space technologies to further space exploration and travel in the future. It's pretty incredible how even the smallest satellites can make meaningful contributions to the care of planet Earth and our efforts to visit other worlds. We're looking forward to providing a great ride to space for these 59 payloads on board today's mission. Stage two lock flow complete. Okay, so there we heard the call out. The second stage is now fully loaded with its liquid oxygen. At this point in time, Falcon 9 is completely loaded with all of its prop propellants, RP-1 or rocket propellant 1, which is a um, refined yeah, a refined kerosene um, and all of its liquid oxygen. So now, right on cue, <laughs> we'll see some of that leftover liquid oxygen venting um, now that the stage one has been closed out as we heard that call come. So that's totally normal. That's just the leftover liquid oxygen um, left in our load lines. Falcon 9 is in startup. All right, there we heard the call out. Falcon 9 is in startup, meaning the flight computers now have control of the launch countdown. Go for launch. All right, that was our final go for launch coming from our launch director. So now at T minus 30 T seconds. 30 seconds. All systems remain go for launch. Let's watch as Falcon 9 takes our 59 spacecraft into orbit. T minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition and lift off. The more D chamber pressure is hollow. Vehicles pitching down range. We're now T plus 43 seconds into flight. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Power and telemetry nominal. We're currently throttling down those M1D engines in preparation for max Q, which we're expecting at T plus one minute and 12 seconds. For those that might be unfamiliar, max Q is when the vehicle experiences vehicle supersonic. the greatest amount of aerodynamic pressure. Great view of the Space Coast. Max Q. All right, there we heard that call out for Max Q. Everything remaining nominal with stage one trajectory. We have five events coming up in quick succession, starting with MECO or main, chill. main engine cutoff. We just heard the call for MVAC chill, meaning the second stage is now uh, preparing for its ignition. Um, as I said, we start with MECO stage separation and SES one or second engine start one followed by stage one flip and boost back burn. As the name suggests, main engine cutoff, beautiful there, uh, beautiful view there from Falcon 9 of those, uh, the plume from the main engines. We're gonna shut those down 
and shortly thereafter separate the first and second stages. Second stage will continue its journey onto orbit. And the first stage is going to, as I mentioned before, make its return back to landing zone one. Nico. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Pretty amazing view there of our second stage. We can see on the left-hand side of your screen, the first stage performing its flip maneuver. The flip, of course, is required in order to reorient the first stage so that it actually flies back toward Florida. You can think of it kind of like a giant U-turn. <laughs> Everything continues to look nominal with the second stage. Beautiful glow from the MVAC engine there on the right-hand side of your screen. Stage one boost back shut down. All right, that boost back burn has concluded. That is the first of three burns that the first stage will perform today. Coming up next, we will have fairing deployment, expecting that to occur in 10 seconds. We can see deployment of the grid fins there on the first stage on the left-hand side of your screen. Bearing separation confirmed. There's our first view of some of our payloads today. We can see that the fairing halves have now separated, fallen away from the vehicle, exposing the 59 spacecraft to the vacuum of space. Today's mission marks the second flight for both of those fairing halves, and we will be attempting to recover them from the water once they fall back to Earth. We're currently in the first of two MVAC burns planned for today. The first burn should last until T plus eight minutes and 30 seconds, so another four minutes on that burn. The next milestone will be the first stage booster's entry burn. As I mentioned before, the first stage is performing three maneuvers today. This entry burn is designed to slow the booster down before it hits the dense part of the Earth's atmosphere. Without this burn, relying on the atmosphere alone to slow down Falcon 9 would put unnecessary strain Vehicle on the rocket. Nominal trajectory. All right, there we heard a call out that we have nominal trajectory. As I mentioned earlier, Transporter 5 is our fifth dedicated SmallSat rideshare program mission and our 22nd mission of 2022. SpaceX is targeting at least three dedicated rideshare flights to sun-synchronous orbit per year, and we also offer opportunities for a ride to orbit on our Starlink missions, which launch every couple of weeks. Small sats can ride to space on SpaceX's Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and Starship in the not too distant future. We're about one minute away from that entry burn. As you can see on the left hand side of your screen, we have deployed the grid fins. Falcon 9 has four of those hypersonic grid fins positioned near the top of the first stage, and it's using nothing but those grid fins for steering as it makes its return to Earth. That is, at least until we light the center engine for landing. You also might notice some white puffs here and there. Uh, those are cold nitrogen gas bursts, which help with attitude control. To put deceleration into perspective, around 60 seconds away from landing, the first stage is moving about 2,000 miles per hour. Then, in less than a minute, we rapidly reduce the speed in order to prepare for landing. The first stage slows down to about 90 miles per hour when stage the landing two, legs is saved. Uh, slows down to about 90 miles per hour when the landing legs deploy. Stage one entry burn startup. All right, there we heard the call out that the entry burn has begun. You can see that on the left-hand side of your screen. 
Again, this is the second of two maneuvers performed by the first stage today for, yeah, its, not for its return to LZ-1. As I mentioned before, um, we are attempting to recover this, and it will be the eighth time um, for this booster. Entry burn shut down. And we're also targeting to land at landing zone one. First stage has just one more burn left, the landing burn, and that begins just before touchdown and provides the booster with a soft descent right before Stage landing. one, FTS has saved. Once we get through the clouds, you should have a pretty clear view of the Space Coast with LZ-1, which is our targeted destination. Falcon 9 has four landing legs made of carbon fiber with aluminum Start honeycomb. Of terminal guidance. They are placed... Stage one, transonic. They're placed symmetrically around the base of the rocket, and they deploy just prior to landing, as we'll see momentarily. Stage one landing burn. All right, you can see that that landing burn has begun. Just before Falcon 9 lands, we're expecting the shutdown of the MVAC second stage. Uh, just after landing, one of our 59 spacecraft will not, that will not separate from the vehicle will activate, and you should hear that call out over the nets. Let's listen in for these activities happening in quick sequential order. Stage one landing like four. And back shut down. Stage one landing approach. Outpost Mars 701, screw rate activation confirmed. Copy now, we're departing station. All right, as you just heard, we had nominal orbit insertion, so we've got a good orbit following that second engine cutoff. And as you saw on your screen, another successful landing for Falcon 9, uh, bringing our total successful F9 first stage landings to 115. As you could also tell by the cheers behind me, it never gets old here. <laughs> we also heard the activation for one of our payloads that will not be deploying from the spacecraft. Um, with that, we're going to take a short break and come back in about 45 minutes for the relight of our second stage followed shortly thereafter by the first 26 scheduled deployments. Stick around and we'll see you soon.
25th century AD. We sat there and looked at the rockets from Mars and you just boggled the mind and mind and mind and mind. And the technology caught up to them.
Transporter 5. For those who have recently joined, we've had a nominal mission so far with an on-time liftoff at 2.35 p.m. Eastern. Currently, we're awaiting the relight of our MVAC engine. It will be a quick three-second burn starting in just a couple of seconds. And back ignition. And shutdown. Like I said, super quick three-second burn there. Uh, now, for those that have recently joined, uh, this is the Transporter 5 mission, our fifth dedicated rideshare mission. Uh, it was very faint, but we did hear uh, confirmation of good orbit there after that uh, quick relight of the second stage engine. This is our fifth dedicated rideshare mission and SpaceX's 22nd mission of 2022. Falcon 9 lifted off at 2.35 p.m. Eastern from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station and had a successful stage separation, landing of the first stage at LZ-1, which marked our 115th recovery of a Falcon 9 first stage booster. We also successfully completed two second stage burns, the most recent one you just saw. For those of you who might not be familiar with our transporter missions, SpaceX is targeting at least three dedicated rideshare flights to sun-synchronous orbit per year, and we also offer opportunities for a ride to orbit on our Starlink missions, which launch every couple of weeks. Small sats can ride to space on our Falcon 9, Falcon Heavy, and in the not-too-distant future, Starship as well. On this flight are 59 spacecraft, including CubeSats, MicroSats, and orbital transfer vehicles carrying spacecraft to be deployed at a later time. Like I mentioned earlier in the webcast, there are some really neat payloads flying today, including spacecraft designed to improve communications and GPS mapping, uh, help monitor weather, environmental changes, and greenhouse gas emissions, and even demonstrate new in-space technologies to further uh, for, to further space exploration and travel in the future. These payloads are awesome examples of how even the smallest of satellites can make meaningful contributions uh, to our care for our own planet, as well as our efforts to visit others. For the 59 spacecraft on board, there will be a total of 39 deployments, which begin around the T plus 59 minute mark, and they will last for approximately 15 minutes. As I mentioned earlier, we are expecting to lose ground station coverage about halfway through the deployment sequence. So only some of our deployments will be visible today. We do expect to have telemetry and hear audio confirmation over the nets when we're back in range of those ground stations. For the payload deployments set to happen during a blackout period, uh, we will lose live camera views and telemetry. But once we regain that ground station coverage, We'll be sure to come back live with updates on those deployments. Acquisition of signal, Bangalore. It's also worth mentioning that because many of the spacecraft are being deployed in groups or quick succession, uh, therefore we may not be able to confirm every deployment in real time, but you should hear most of those deployments called out by the operator on console. Uh, but for any that we don't hear in real time, we'll try to provide updates by the close of the webcast. If you want to follow along with a list, uh, you can check a full one out on SpaceX.com. Uh, for now, let's listen in as deployment sequence is about to begin. Geo-Optic, Cicero 2, Vehicle 2, separation confirmed. Shared set, 2141, separation confirmed. NASA Pathfinder Technology Demonstrator 3, separation confirmed. Lemur 2, Karen B, separation confirmed. Your Dineta, separation confirmed. Geo Optics, Cicero 2, Vehicle 1, separation confirmed. Lemur 2, Van Entries, separation confirmed.
Part 2, separation confirmed. Lemur 2, Tennis Sun Lily, separation confirmed. GHG set, C4, penny separation confirmed. Planetum 1 and spin 1, separation confirmed. Lemur 2, Hancom 1, separation confirmed. GHG set, C3 Luca, separation confirmed. NASA CubeSat, proximity operations demonstration, separation confirmed. Connecta, T1.1, separation confirmed. Lemur 2, Mimi, 1307, separation confirmed. GHG set, C5, Diaco, separation confirmed. For sale one, separation confirmed. Fleet Space, Centauri 5, separation confirmed. CNCE V4 and CNCE V5, separation confirmed. New set 28, separation confirmed. Sherpa AC1, separation confirmed.
expected loss of signal. Maldives. Very set 1C, separation confirmed. AMS, separation confirmed. Broncos have one separation confirmed. Do set twenty nine separation confirmed. That confirms our first set of deployments today. Uh, all 26 have been verified as separated. We're now entering that blackout period that I mentioned. This loss of signal will last until around the T plus one hour and 15 minute mark. We'll be back just before then to get confirmation of the final 13 deployments set to happen during that time. For now, sit back and enjoy the Space Jams. Separation confirmed. First ice eye separation confirmed. Expected loss of signal, Bangalore.
Now that the launch went successful, where we can't wait to be deployed so that we can begin the commissioning process and start operating all of our customers' payloads. Follow us on our social media channels to catch up with the missions.